We adopted our son, Michael, at nine months old. And Michael came with a pre-existing condition called cerebral palsy. As young parents, we were just delighted to have Michael in our lives. As Michael started to grow over the next few years, the cerebral palsy became more and more evident. And about the time he started preschool, around four or five years old, um, Michael would walk with his arms above his head, kind of like this, kind of bouncing off the walls to maintain his balance. And so it was evident he was headed towards that direction to where a wheelchair would be coming up pretty soon. As parents, like any parents, we just wanted Michael to have the best life possible. And so we literally, we traveled to Mexico, England, Germany, various places here in the United States to look at therapies for, you know, children with cerebral palsy to see if we could improve his quality of life. And everywhere we went, we were met with pretty much the same explanation. There is no cure for cerebral palsy. The best we can do is just exercise and diet and things like this to help improve the quality of life that he has. And as parents, that wasn't good enough. We, we felt like there had to be something more. There had to be something greater that could help. And when we went out of the country, Germany specifically, Mexico, uh, even one trip to Japan, there was more hope there. There were more things in the works. There were more therapies available. And so that allowed me to start looking into different directions. Now this is back in the 80s. The internet wasn't around. And so we were going to trade shows. We would go to health shows and health fairs. And I became introduced to a book called Mega Brain by Michael Hutchings. And that book became my new Bible, at least as far as it came uh, for therapies for my son, Michael. And in there, I, through that book, I came across different therapies. And one of them was from the Ohio State University of Medicine, Dr. David Clark, uh, Dr. Margaret Patterson, a neurosurgeon out of uh, Scotland, Aberdeen, Scotland, uh, Dr. Uh, Persinger at Laurenton University in Toronto, Canada. And these three doctors had been pioneering different therapies. They didn't know anything about each other. Dr. Clark was working with uh, spinning a child in a, in a chair to help develop the inner ear. Um, and he found that this was helping with uh, all sorts of neurological issues. Um, Dr. Uh, Persinger was using lights and different flashing lights uh, to the eyes to help stimulate left and right brain um, connection. And then Dr. Uh, Patterson, a neurosurgeon, was developing microcurrent that would be applied just behind the ear or to the earlobe that was helping the brain create new neural pathways. Well, these three things were pretty important to me. And so as we looked into this and started working on this, we eventually developed a machine that later became known as the Theta Chamber, and Michael was our first um, recipient of that technology. And what we did now, at the time we had this, Michael was now almost eight years old. His cerebral palsy was becoming more and more an issue in his mobility. And at the end of that, it was a 21-day course based on what Persinger and um, Clark and, and uh, Patterson were doing. There, there are different protocols. And so we did that for Michael for 21 days. And at the end of that 21 days, there was a little bit of improvement in Michael. I mean, he seemed to be processing information faster. His mobility was a little bit better. It was the next six months that were magical. In those next six months, Michael's mobility became almost normal. He transitioned from handicapped uh, school to a normal school. And Michael is now 40 years old, uh, will be 40 this June, and he's a second degree black belt, um, speaks multiple languages to some degree or another. And um, physically, you would have never know that Michael ever had cerebral palsy. 
All right, so that whole experience was um, life-changing for our family. And I realized at that time that there were things that we didn't know here. And that led me on this journey, which has brought me to where we are today in 2022. We learned about frequencies. We learned about different therapies. We learned about uh, our belief systems. We learned about what we say to ourselves, how all of these things affect us. Well, in 2008, my wife and I were in, in uh, China attending a medical convention. And there was a booth there from Russia that had developed a scanner that scanned the body through frequencies through the brain. Well, this was my new real big interest. And we went to their booth. We experienced a, a scan, a digital body scan uh, with these big, uh, big uh, transducers on our head. And it it nailed us. It, it showed us everything that was wrong or uh, awry in our bodies to the to the T. Well, we later worked with that company and acquired the rights to bring that to the United States. And we did that f until about 2012. And then when technology had advanced, in other words, Windows 10 came available, the software wouldn't be stable anymore. And as we worked with the company, um, they just, they had decided to bag it. This software had been written in the late eighties, early nineties on software that nobody supports anymore. And so they basically says, you're pretty much on your own. And so over the next two to three years, we rewrote all of that software, all of their um, information on today's technology and for today's platform and software. And it became the AO scan. And we've been promoting the AO scan since 2012. And it was a big system. It was a $30,000 scanner that was in a doctor's office and you'd go in and you'd sit there and you'd be there anywhere from an hour to three hours, depending on your scan, um, based on the old technology. Well, we were able to bring that technology to where we could get it done with much smaller transducers and we could do it in um, about 45 minutes to an hour. Well, part of that scanner was inner voice and the inner voice uh, is where we record about 10 to 20 seconds of your voice and we analyze uh, 2000 frequencies over 12 notes and we're looking for frequencies that are out of range way high or way low and as you listen to those frequencies played back in your in your headset it helps with your emotions which helps with some of the other physical issues you'd be dealing with well we thought that that would be an amazing tool to put into the hands of as many people as we can. If you can get a hold of your emotions, then your physical issues aren't as dramatic and you're able to deal with them better. And so we started working with a mobile device that just had the inner voice portion of the scanner on it. Well, as that became ready to go to market, and that was about $2,000 for that device and then a monthly fee of about 200 a month to maintain the software we realized, well, maybe we can add a little bit more of the other scanner to this. And we added a little bit of vitals and a little bit of comprehensive. And we introduced it. And that went for about a year, a year and a half. And then we had people come to us and say, you know, we need to get this out to the masses. And that's how Solex came to be. The full $30,000 scanner in your hand that you can now take and share with the world.